Welcome to the Existential Empath Podcast. My name is Tanya and I am an intuitive empath. My intention is to share valuable tips, tools, and techniques that I have learned so you can tap into your own inner healer naturally and intuitively. Hi, everybody, and welcome back to my channel. My name is Tanya, and I help people tap into their inner healer naturally and intuitively. In this video, I wanted to talk about subconscious programming and how it can affect us in our adult lives. So programming that we've received as children and how it can positively or negatively affect us as adults. So when we are kids, we are in a state of observance. Okay, so roughly about to the age of six or seven, we are observing our surroundings. We are observing those people who are closest to us. We are trying to learn how to fit into society. We are in a state of uh, just really soaking things in. And that's where many of us learn our belief systems. And that's where we can pick up our habits as well, is when we are in a really, really young state and we are in a state of observance. So when we pick up some sort of a subconscious habit, that's something that we are doing repetitively over and over and over again, that is what a habit is, something that we routinely do, then what we are doing is we are creating a program, okay? So when we create a program within our subconscious mind, it's something that gets so customary for us that it's actually running on what is called autopilot. So our subconscious mind controls our body and there are times when our body will start to do things that we don't even consciously know that we're doing. Like for example, biting our fingernails. I know for me, for many, many years, I would subconsciously bite my fingernails and the people around me would slap my hand and tell me to stop doing it. And I didn't even really realize that I was doing it. Some of us may pick up a cigarette and smoke a cigarette and subconsciously they're doing that. Consciously, they aren't really realizing that it's a habit or a routine of something that they picked up at a younger age. And when we do something habitually and we continue to do it, say some sort of a traumatic event happens and we continue to vacillate on that memory, which is a snapshot, our subconscious takes a snapshot, which is called a memory, and we begin to vacillate on that memory and then we attach an emotion to that, which is an energetic, magnetic thought pattern, okay, an emotion. So when we attach that emotion to that memory and we think about that, it starts to spin in our mind for several days, that is considered what we call a mood, right? So you'll say, I'm just in a bad mood. This thing happened to me a few days ago and you're attaching a memory to an emotion. So now if that starts to continue on, say that that mood continues on for six months, eight months, nine months, and you are still in that mood, that now becomes what's called a temperament, okay? So now your temperament has gone from this used to just be a bad mood that I'm in, and now this is my This is my temperament. This is how I am on the reg because of this thing that happened to me, you know, six, eight, nine months ago, okay? So now when we continue to have this particular habitual routine, this subconscious programming, this pattern running in the back of our mind, and I kind of explain it like a computer, when we have cookies or cash, right? We have to clear them. But if we don't do that, they are constantly running in the background, okay? Until we physically go in there and clear those cookies or that cash. It's like going in there and physically clearing these thought processes, these subconscious programs. So if we continue to have this particular trauma that happened to us, you know, eight, nine months ago, and now this extends out for years, okay, for years, This becomes a personality trait, okay? So you can kind of see where I'm going with this. It starts off with a a pattern, a habit, 
goes into a mood, goes into a temperament, and now it's actually becoming much more ingrained. 95% of us by the age of 35 are running on autopilot programs that we created many, 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 many years ago. So you'll get up in the morning and then make a cup of coffee, jump in the shower, get dressed, do your hair, you know, women do your makeup, and then you get in the car, you take the same route to work, you're in contact with all the same people, you sit in the same spot, some of you have the same repetitive job day in and day out, and you're doing this, your body is moving with this, okay? So your body and your subconscious mind are one and the same. So you are working through this on a state of autopilot. And many of us don't even realize that we're doing this. And then we start to feel depressed. We start to feel anxious. We aren't happy with our lives. It's because we aren't consciously living out a different program, okay? So we are stuck in this program that 95% of us learned during our observational years as children, and now we are continually moving through this program. So this is where I struggled with obsessive compulsive order for many, many, many years. As a child, I would watch my mom have OCD. I would watch my grandmother have OCD. I was observing the way that they would clean the house, the way that they would eat their food, the way that they would dress, the way that they would go about their daily affairs. And as a child, I picked up on this. I picked up on this anxious energy of perfection, of having everything be perfect. And as I got older, when I would get into a state of stress or a state of anxiety, my OCD would just go off the charts because I knew that if I felt like everything was perfect in its perfect place, in its perfect order, that my anxiety levels would go down. But really, if someone came in and moved things around, I would lose it. I would absolutely lose it. So really, it was not serving me, okay? So what I had to do was go back to that time when I was in that observation stage and ask myself, when did I pick up this trait, okay? When did I pick up this habit that turned into a temperament that turned into a personality trait? Okay, so I had to go all the way back to that time, clear those emotions around that, all right, through different modalities like EFT tapping and the emotion code and meditation, and really go back to that time of being a child and observing those around me who are doing that. And a lot of these habitual patterns are generational. So I can't blame my mom for this because my mom was watching her mom and dad do this, which they were probably watching their parents or siblings do this. And it just keeps going back and back and back. But really what it was doing is it was just spiraling and spiraling and passing on from one generation to the next generation to the next generation. Okay. So when we are doing the tapping and we are actually going in there, what we are doing is we are resetting that program. So it's kind of like you have a record player and you're playing that record. I look at OCD like this, the record starts skipping, okay? So when you are in that pattern, it's almost like you are a computer program and you keep redoing something over, redoing something over, redoing something over. I'm skipping the record, skipping the record, skipping the record. Many of us will pick up that needle and set it down and keep playing that same song. When really what we need to do is pick up the needle, take off that record and put on a completely new record, right? A completely new program. We need to reset our entire program. And this can apply to so many different things, to alcoholism, to smoking, to different obsessive compulsive disorders, to eating habits. I was working with a client recently. She has a sugar craving, okay? We couldn't get past it. Well, we figured out, we went all the way back to her childhood and when she would go to the dentist or to the doctor, they would give her candy, a sucker, to alleviate her anxiety. So anytime she felt anxious, she had been programmed as a child to pick up candy because candy would alleviate her anxiety. So in this day and age, we are in a constant state of fight, flight, or freeze. Our amygdala, which is a small 
almond shaped neuron in our brain, two of them actually, uh, a set of them, that fires off when we are in a state of fear. This is a state that as back in the cavemen times, it was something that was really, really beneficial to us, okay? If we were getting chased by a tiger or a bear or some sort of predator, we would want that fight, flight, or freeze response to kick off because it would save our life. It was a part of our survival. But now in this day and age, we are constantly being consumed by this fight, flight, or fear response through different mechanisms, through our media, through our work environments, through our home environments. There's so many different aspects that are coming into play that are causing us to be in this absolute state of fight, flight, or freeze response. So when we actually go in and tap on whatever it is that is causing this particular routine or habit or subconscious program to be running in the background, then we can go in and reset that so we can change the energy behind whatever it is that is causing us this stress or distress in our lives. When we are moving that energy out through that tapping process, we are actually using both hemispheres of the brain and it's allowing us to not only move the energy physically through the physical body, but as we make the statements, we're moving it through our emotional, mental, and energetic body as well. That's where we can actually go in and focus on the root cause of the problem that's causing us whatever it is, whether it's a, a physical ailment or some sort of an addiction or a craving or some sort of deep you know, emotional response. Maybe we're having a hard time getting through a grieving process. We, we feel stuck, we feel stagnant, and we can't move past a certain event or a trauma. Maybe we were in a car accident and those images keep coming to the surface. Tapping is not going to erase those images, those snapshots, those memories. What tapping is going to do is it is going to dissolve the emotional magnetic vibration around that particular memory or that snapshot. So when we go back to that memory, when you go back to whatever that trauma was, you don't have that emotional response that causes your body to go into that fight, flight, or freeze response, okay? So I hope that this explained EFT tapping a little bit more. And if you want to book a session with me, you can visit my website. I'm also an emotion code practitioner too, which is a little bit different. It's where we tap into the energy body through what's called applied kinesiology or muscle testing. And we go in and hone in on certain areas of the body to see where those emotions can get trapped. It's a little bit different and I've got several different sessions on my website. My website also has different types of energy, physical, emotional tools on there as well, like Bach flower essences and different types of tools and techniques that you can use. So you deserve to navigate your life in alignment with health, happiness, and abundance. To learn more about the services that I provide, including Beyond Quantum Healing Hypnosis, EFT Tapping, and The Emotion Code, visit my website at www.TheExistentialEmpath.com.